feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. where you live in endless joy and love as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to invite uh, the children to leave. Uh, with we're going to, We have a 11 o'clock Sunday school starting today, so Family Minister Adam's going to take uh, whatever children I have. i got Andrew and Teddy, I see there. And, Sam, do you want to go? There you go. Okay. <laughs> Steve and Betsy's kids are on vacation, so we're good. And then I got Gavin. It's coming forward here. Gavin Dean is uh, recognized by uh, most everyone here. He's a longtime member since he was a child here at Messiah. Uh, he's in his third year, starts his third year of three years at seminary, at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, Messiah gives a, a, a small portion of uh, gift towards his seminary education every semester, and he's here to uh, tell us how he's doing. Tim? Good morning. So like Pastor Carl said, I'm Gavin Deem. I'm Jim and Cassie's oldest son. And you guys throughout my seminary time have, as he said, given me some financial support, which the kind of transitional life of being a student can be stressful going from job to job. So I'm very grateful for that, as well as the prayers and the spiritual support you all provide me. And more than that, as he said, I grew up here. I did bell choir mulch delivery with the Hesslers. I did Valentine's Day dinners. I had went through the confirmation program here. And the seminary education I'm receiving is only possible because of the foundation that I received here at Messiah. You are a wonderful community. I appreciate all the gifts that you've given me over the years and into the present. Uh, while I've been in Minnesota, it's been two years. It started all online. We're now uh, back to in-person classes, which has been great. Uh, it's less great in the winter, uh, which are miserable. Will not recommend those. It lasts six months, folks. Not a fan. But <laughs> I've been fortunate to be connected with a congregation out in a town called Painesville, Minnesota. It's about 90 miles west of the Twin Cities. I do youth work and I volunteer there on Sundays. Um, they're a real uh, support to me as well, which has been great. I'm coming up on my final year. I'm pretty much done with uh, all the classes, thankfully. Only a couple left. The final piece of uh, seminary process is becoming approved to whatever ministry uh, you feel called to. For me, that is chaplaincy in a hospital setting. So I served at a uh, northwestern suburb hospital last summer and just felt really connected to God and the Spirit through that ministry, uh, both in the, the joys and the reliefs after surgeries and recoveries walking alongside people, but also in the holy and sacred work of accompanying people through grief and loss and tragedy. So that is what I feel called to in ministry. In support of that, I will be a full-time chaplain starting in August for a year, kind of as a trial period as an intern at the uh, University of Minnesota Medical Center in Minneapolis, which is just a whole lot of M's in any particular order. 
So I have a couple of classes, I'll do that, and then I will hopefully graduate in May and start looking for a job somewhere warmer. <laughs> but again, thank you for being the congregation that helped raise me and the congregation who continues to support me today. Thank you. A reading from the eighth Psalm. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulk work because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals, that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope for sh of sharing the glory of God. And that not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that afflictions produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to the shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has given, been given to us. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our holy gospel this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
I am grateful for the opportunity to be with you all again, um, especially on this kind of last of the festival days. If you look at a calendar, it is nothing but green from here on out until Reformation Sunday. So we are um, blessed to be able to come together for this festival of the Holy Trinity. But I do have to say that when Pastor Carl invited me to preach today, he said that the only, the only charge that I had was that, um, uh, that, that I would be asked to explain everything about the Holy Trinity, and I had about 12 minutes to do that. And as much as I worked at it, it kept coming in over 20, so I just decided to write this sermon instead, and I hope that that's okay today. Since I was last with you, I have started a new job. I, um, my, my ministry throughout my career has kind of alternated between congregational settings and higher education, sometimes at the same time, but not always. And so recently I took on the role of the director of student services at Ohio University in Lancaster. And one of my very favorite parts of this job is that I work with students who are in the 7th to the 12th grade. So all of that experience in youth ministry comes in really handy. 7th to the 12th graders who are taking a college class as a part of Ohio's dual enrollment program called College Credit Plus. So one of the things that I do is I sit down with new students and their parents and talk to them about the fact that whatever their grade, they are in a college class and they are charged with being an independent learner for being proactive and, and being daring and kind of taking the responsibility for their education. And sometimes when I say that, I see just a little bit of anxiety in the eyes of the students. But often I see sheer terror in the eyes of the parents who are sitting there with them. And I've come to realize that the reason that I see that terror or that anxiety is that we so often associate being independent with being alone. And I have to hurry in and tell them that is not what I'm saying. You will not be alone in this. You will have resources at the college and in your school and in your family. Independent doesn't mean alone. It means active and engaged in a different way. But I have to say, as I think about our gathering on Holy Trinity Sunday, first of all, I have a little bit of that anxiety preaching on these texts and on this day, but also I think it's kind of coming out of a similar space. We wrestle with how to believe that something, someone, our God might be one and also three. That this balance between independence and something else is just hard for us to wrap our heads around. Throughout the ages, the Christian church, our scholars, our teachers, our preachers have wrestled with the Trinity and typically have come down kind of in two different pathways. There's the path that does seek to see what all this particular doctrine might kind of reveal to us. And they get in the weeds of all of the history and the possibilities. And often that involves saying at least one thing in Latin or Greek. And also I found that it's one of those places where if you go just a step too far, that's what the church usually decries as heresy in the course of our historic lives together. The other route, the other option has been to kind of be wide open in our embrace of the Holy Trinity and to be willing to sort of laugh at ourselves for our attempts to control it as much as we maybe have as a people, as, as followers of Christ throughout the years. This group has come to see it as a holy invitation to a kind of divine playfulness, to being invited into this mystery of what God is up to, who God is, how God acts, what that means for those of us created in God's image. And in fact, I think that the biggest problem between folks in this kind of era, and I've been in both of these, both of these uh, spaces before, but when I've tried to be on this side, I've tended to treat the Trinity as a puzzle to be solved. And this side is where I've kind of treated it as a mystery to let wash over me. If any of you have read uh, anything by Malcolm Gladwell, he, he speaks about the difference between a puzzle and a, minist and a mystery. Puzzles are things that have solutions. It may be hard to get to, 
but if essentially, eventually we might get enough information and data that we can kind of solve it and figure it out in a sort of straightforward and satisfying way. But mysteries are not like that. Mysteries require judgment and assessment, Malcolm Gladwell says. It can, requires uncertainty. And the hard part is not that we have too little information, but that we have too much and we can't figure out how to corral all of it. The great witness and promise of this day on the church's calendar is that the Holy Trinity is a mystery, not a puzzle. I've come to think about that, especially this week. One of the texts that is sometimes read on this Sunday of the Holy Trinity is a text from the eighth chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs is a part of what's called the wisdom literature tradition, and a lot of the, the words, we don't read it very often on a Sunday morning. It's not a piece of our regular go-to Hebrew scriptures in our public worship. But when we do read it, it usually has something to say that's like about teaching, helping people figure out the way of wisdom versus the way of folly, how they should live in the world. And sometimes by doing that, it's really hard to understand, and it feels like it's almost this kind of secret knowledge for the few. Not quite, but really close. But this particular text that is read on, on Holy Trinity sometimes is not about knowledge and wisdom that is only for the few. In fact, I'm going to read just a few verses, not the whole scripture, but a few verses. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, The Lord created me at the beginning. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped. And the text goes on from there. All of these places that holy wisdom was present with God at the beginning, before, in fact, the beginning of creation. <clears throat> and it is... It is um, a teaching and a, a gift of wisdom that you heard was available to all at the byways, at the gates, at the tops of the mountains. Anyone within hearing distance can hear this promise, this wisdom, this word. It was actually because of this text that the early church came to identify the second person of the Trinity, the Son, the Word, the Logos, as uh, as, as holy wisdom, as a part of that particular tradition, one who was present from the beginning of time. As Christians, we have inherited from our Jewish ancestors this rich and vast tapestry of scripture and story. And so because of that, the early church was able to reach back beyond actually Proverbs to the, to the story, the, the early story of creation in the book of Genesis, and find some room for playfulness in that space, and find the opportunity to hear, perhaps, a, references or places where the Trinity might be seen. Genesis begins, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind... A wind, the Holy Spirit, from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, the word, wisdom, let there be light. I love this text, actually, and I love this tradition in the church. I think because I do believe that we are at our best when we embrace this Sunday of the Holy Trinity from the perspective of creation and new creation. It is, after all, the, the text that, or the, the words that we hear in any baptismal service is that triune name of God. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is a reminder to us that we emerge from the waters of baptism when we, we speak of bearing the image of God. We actually mean the image, perhaps, of the Holy Trinity God. 
the triune God that we, we walk out of those waters. And actually, as people at all, we are created in the image of God in that way. And I think that means on a Sunday like today, one of the things we get to do is ask ourselves, what does it mean to walk around bearing the image of the triune God, of the Holy Trinity? God who is at the same time one, but also made of diverse persons caught in some mysterious eternal relationship with one another. And I think the answer is actually buried in there. The answer is what it means to bear the image of the Holy Trinity is to recognize that independent is not alone. That being one and being called is still being called into community. It means that we are at our most godlike when we are also part of a diverse, relational, playful, mysterious community in God's name. We hear the scriptures today. We sing songs of God's presence, songs of the dance of the Trinity. We come to this table and we are sent out through those doors, sent into the world to be bearers of God's image and bearers of God's love. And that, my siblings in Christ, that is a call to some abundant dancing. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. the dance of Trinity before all worlds begun. The interweaving of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. The universe of time and space did not arise by chance. But as the three in love and hope made room within their dance. Come see the face of Trinity, newborn in Bethlehem. Then bloodied by a crown of thorns outside Jerusalem. The dance of Trinity is meant for human flesh and bone. When fear confines the dance in death, God rolls away the stone. Come speak aloud of Trinity as wind and tongues of flame. Set people free at Pentecost to tell the Savior's name. We know the yoke of sin and death, our necks have worn it smooth. Go tell the world of weight and woe that we are free. the dance of Trinity before all worlds begun. We sing the praises of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. Let voices raise and interweave by 
my love and hope set free to shape in song this joy, this life, the dance of Trinity. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, let us uh, share this Nicene Creed, a, a, a creed that was written early in We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under the box of Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us gather. Holy God, we celebrate your longing to be revealed to us. And we give thanks for this gift of wisdom and knowledge of the truth. May we come dance in this mystery and grow from it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, just as your economy you live in peace, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we long for your creation to live in peace. We pray for those places where peace does not exist, especially places of war, like in the Ukraine. And those spots in our community where people suffer from abuse, especially those suffering the abuse of racism. In this week of pride, those outside the community in the LGBT community, in this city of Reynoldsburg, those immigrants who don't feel like they belong, especially our Nepalese neighbors here, may we make peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that in this revelation that we have received, that we share abundantly the grace that comes from knowing you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless our vacation Bible school this week, and may we be good sharers of the gospel and lovers of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord, we pray for those who are sick or ill in our midst. We lift up especially those who are grieving this week. Sue Jameson, Gary, and Cheryl Knapp. We pray for Steve and Becky House and their family. We pray for Lois and Kimberly and Meg and Susan and Jennifer and Ryan and Sherry and Adam and Tim and Bill. And David, Joseph, Terry, and Mary Lou, Drew, Dave, Joanne, Julie, Tom, and others named aloud. Hear these things. Gather them in. 
share and no joy. Glory to no mercy. All this we pray and whatever else your wisdom gains that we pray with the confidence of the Son and the revelation that he's given us of your truth. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's love and God's peace with one another now.
as the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst. May we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one. Holy God, we give thanks that you have met us in this space of worship 
May our worship brought joy in heaven. And we celebrate your presence that we leave with now in our gathering in this bread and wine with the wisdom of your word. Amen. Um, just a few announcements before we uh, scatter here. Take a look at that bulletin board. Uh, in your bulletin there to, to find out uh, everything that's going on in this week. Uh, a couple things I want to highlight. It is Vacation Bible School Week, so uh, it's all hands on deck. There's still some uh, donations that you could make for materials. I'm sure Adam could still use a few volunteers here and there. Reach out to him. It's in your bulletin board now. We have a, a really nice... Uh, uh, attendance anticipated from the uh, children that are registered and a good crop of uh, volunteers that are stepped forward so it should be just a really fun week here 9 to noon uh, Monday through Friday so we lift all that up we have um, Holly and Amy meeting you as you leave here today uh, to sign you up to be a lector like uh, Jim Henson lectured for us today and often at the service and communion assistance like uh, Patsy and Larry uh, here this morning, and uh, ushers like Jim and Sandy Keeney were ushering today. We, they're, they are going to try to sign people up for the last six months of the year here, so they got an ambitions. But we need, we need you to, to raise your hand and come forward and, and pick up those roles. Uh, when you looked at it, July and August, at least when I looked at it at eight, no one was signing up at all. So I don't know what that says about our summer attendance, but probably nothing good. Uh, so, um, so, so take a look at that, please, before you leave. Um, the YMCA Family Serve is allowing us to come and uh, serve again. And uh, Phyllis Sneed has uh, thankfully raised her hand to, to, to help lead that. Uh, so we need to reconstitute the people. This is. We do a lot of serves at the shelters in our area. This is one we do every two months now. And it's the largest shelter we go, because unfortunately, it's uh, probably the largest shelter in Columbus, because children are involved and in, in their parents. Um, so if you'd like to be a part of that, it's uh, Monday, June 20, 20th, I believe. Five to eight is about the, the obligation. And you can call Phyllis Need, it's in the bulletin, and, uh, and, and find out and, and more about it and, and see if it works out for you. Uh, we also want to give thanks for our blood drive that happened last week. And uh, they were so pleased with us that they've asked us to become a regular spot for them. <laughs> and thankfully, Susan Mulder and Debbie Glass, I believe, uh, with her, are, are going to lead that. Uh, and we'll become a regular spot like we used to be. So this means that none of you are allowed to give blood anywhere else in the metro area except here. We, you need to save all your blood for our blood drives here at Messiah. So that'll be coming up at the end of August. Uh, tomorrow we have a committal for um, Monica Kelch uh, here in the front of our lawn. We're going to meet in the Sutter House and we're going to march to the front and uh, Ben... Uh, Ben and I have, have uh, created a, a wonderful service where we're going to spread Monica's ashes on, on the front of our lawn in the shape of a cross. So it'll be, it, it, it'll be very special. So that's happening tomorrow here at 5 o'clock. And um, I think that's all my announcements that I have. Why don't you stay? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace.
and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, and with our gospel day, sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Christ, who once came to bring on your redeeming wing, healing and sight, health to the troubled mind, sight where illusions blind, oh, now to Kind, let there be light. Spirit of truth and love, life giving, holy dove, speed forth your flight. Move on the water's face, bearing the lamp of and in earth's darkest place let there be light. Holy and blessed three, Glorious Trinity, wisdom of light, boundless as ocean's tide, rolling in fullest pride, through the earth far and wide, let there 